we've seen a lot of talks um, from expert developers, expert web developers from all kinds. Uh, but Ruth is actually a brand new web developer. Uh, and so she's going to tell us all about the experience uh, of getting into that uh, and how that goes. So everybody give a hand for Ruth. Thank you. Is it, is it back up? Yeah, OK. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Ruth. Uh, some of you may recognize my face from Meets, Meets Face. Uh, uh, and others may recognize my last name uh, as belonging to Bryce who uh, seems to know at least two-thirds of you out there, uh, who's my husband. Um, I, uh, as, as Alan said, I'm a brand new programmer. I'm not even actually technically a web developer. Uh, I am technically a web designer. Uh, I decided after many years of encouragement by many members of my family, I come from a very uh, engineering-heavy family, uh, to to, to learn how to program just this past January. Um, and people have been really interested about why I decided to start, and I'm happy to share that story. I've already shared it with a few of you, but um, I'm not really here to talk about why I wanted to program. I'm here to talk about um, what has happened and what I've uh, experienced since I made the decision to learn how to program. Uh, and uh, so I'm just going to share with you my experience and some stories. Uh, uh, and talk a little bit about the barriers that I have encountered and that I see out there specifically for people in my situation. So um, uh, adults, uh, educated, successful past careers uh, who are making a switch. In my case, it was a complete 180. I taught childbirth for nine years, uh, so I did a lot of public speaking, but it was in front of expectant couples and people with brand new babies uh, uh, for a lot of years at a hospital. And uh, so that's my professional background, is all in healthcare. Uh, and I have uh, realized along the way that there are some very unique barriers for those of us who uh, are kind of piecemealing together uh, programming education. We have uh, full-time jobs uh, in other fields, or we have children, or we have both. Uh, we don't necessarily have the ability to just jump right into uh, a master's degree program, or a second bachelor's, or a, a coding school, or anything like that. We're kind of putting it all together ourselves, slowly but surely. Uh, and uh, we, I think, uh, have a lot to offer the, the community. So uh, why should you encourage and support uh, people like me? Uh, I call it, uh, because of our experiential diversity, uh, it's not just diversity of race or gender, which we talk about a lot uh, in tech, but also diversity of experience. Um, like I said, I, I am not a stranger to technology. I was brought up by a very early adopter. I was sharing with CJ earlier that my first computer that I learned to word process on was an Apple Lisa. Uh, and um, so I, this is not all new and foreign to me, but I have very much been on the fringe. Uh, and so people who I've shared my story with, other moms of my kids at school, uh, who are truly outside of the community, but have seen what I've been able to do, know how much I make an hour as a brand new, I call myself a fetus programmer, I'm not even really junior, I'm like, be, I'm before junior, um, knowing how much I make doing that freelance, uh, that I'm doing it at home while my kids are at school, they are interested and they have something to bring to the community. But they're not going to enter the community the same way that most other people are. Uh, I found this quote on Twitter a while ago, and I wrote it in my notebook just in case my talk actually got accepted. Uh, and I went back to try to figure out who to attribute it to. So I did not say this, but people who build technology should represent all the people who use it. And parents specifically represent a large portion of internet users. Parents are very traditional early adopters. We are desperate for solutions to help us with our children. And if we see something new on the internet that might give us answers, we are very quick to give that a try. Um, so we need to try to include more. And as, as people 
uh, realize the abundance of well-paying, uh, very satisfying jobs that are uh, out there in tech. Uh, and they hear stories like mine, and I know there's a few others out there. I finally found you, Abby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been trying to connect this whole time. There you are. Uh, as they hear about that, you are going to meet more and more uh, developers. Sorry, I saw a bunch of uh, action over there. Uh, you're going to meet more and more aspiring developers who are in my uh, situation. So, uh, successful careers in the past, uh, and you know, having a nice, uh, solid resume. Uh, does not mean that there's going to be a seamless entry to life as a programmer. Just because I learned how to do something before uh, doesn't mean that I need less help learning how to do it now. In fact, many uh, people in my position actually need more help because programming is a unique field in that it is never the same one day to the next. And uh, that can be difficult for anybody to kind of grasp and become comfortable with, just the constant evolution of what's happening. And the, as you're learning new tools, they're evolving, and the processes, everything is changing. But for somebody in their late 20s, mid 30s, 40s, 50s, who come from teaching or healthcare uh, uh, or uh, any number of industries where you know, everything is always changing. Careers change, but uh, not nearly as quickly as technology changes. Uh, so having the mentoring uh, readily available and not having to ask for it, just because I look like I know what I'm doing uh, and I'm not, you know, a you know, a fresh-faced 18-year-old with like wide eyes uh, who is a brilliant hacker, uh, doesn't mean that I, I am not just as scared, if not more scared, than that person is. Um, all right, you have to excuse me. I have uh, paper notes. Uh, that's just how I do things, one difference <laughs> between uh, everybody else and me. And what I found is, um, since so much of my point here has been about the importance of community for adult programmers, for, I say adult, everybody's an, you know, we're, we're all adults, but uh, adult new entrants to, uh, to development and design uh, is that since I got here, everybody here has been so welcoming and interested and kind, and, and I feel like you are not really my target audience because you are here trying to better the community, you're interested in what, I wanted, what I'm doing, and uh, you want to help me. Uh, my target audience are the people who uh, don't attend conferences. They, uh, they aren't really interested in the community. They, they have their own reasons for the design, the development that they do, and the people that I've encountered along the way, the kind of blank faces when I ask questions, the, um, the stares at my, my gigantic, really cheap PC that I'm just kind of waiting to die so I can buy a nicer one. You know, uh, uh, the people who are not so uh, instantly accepting of my position. And so far, what I've encountered here is you guys have been so amazingly wonderful. Uh, so I've, I've kind of rewritten my talk a little bit, even this morning. So thank you for being so great. But geez, I mean, I wish I could have just stuck with what I had before. Uh, <laughs> One, uh, one aspect of my journey that has been unique and I just feel so fortunate has been this, that I entered uh, as a new programmer with an instant community, um, both through my husband and his friends, but also through Meetspace. And um, I became a uh, active on Meetspace uh, back last fall and I had a little, um, my little identity crisis, which is what led me to uh, starting uh, to, on Code Academy, which is where I started to learn programming. Uh, and I, Bryce had been telling me for years, you can do this, you should, you should learn, uh, it's not hard just to, to get started, just give it a try. But he, he loves me unconditionally, and so sometimes I don't listen to what he says, because he's going to say that about anything I do. Um, but when I started to hear it from people on Meetspace, these really well-known, respected programmers were saying the same thing. It, it kind of started sinking in. And um, so Lydia, who you heard from yesterday about um, bookmarklets, she wrote this blog post that's linked in my slides uh, about 
the importance of um, welcoming newcomers. And uh, it was more specifically about individuals attending events alone, like at meetups, the people sitting in the corner who clearly don't, don't know that many people yet. Um, but it really applies to anyone in my situation. And um, my favorite quote from her blog is, she says, offering someone your name, uh, inviting someone to join you, it's more than a courtesy. It's a direct introduction into what feels like a very closed and very exclusive world. Uh, so as you attend more meetups, and hopefully I get my word out, and uh, uh, more uh, people who a appear at, oops, at first glance uh, to, be, to be older and experienced and well-spoken, uh, uh, you encounter them at meetups, you know, try asking them about their background and uh, see where they came from, and uh, you will probably have something to add to their journey to help uh, make them feel more included. Uh, so in addition to feeling like outsiders, because uh, for lots of different reasons, uh, one thing that I've encountered is a whole slew of unrealistic expectations. Uh, and it's, it feels like a lot of it is uh, because they know the people who I've encountered. Uh, I, I, it feels a lot because of my age, although perhaps this is just my experience, perhaps, you know, brand new young programmers experience the same thing. Uh, the first is the terminology. So let's talk a little bit about terminology. Uh, tech jargon, it's like a whole new language. I want there to be a Code Academy module that just teaches me the difference between a dev and a designer or the different, what, what does full stack mean? What does front end versus back end mean? I've been hearing people say it for years and years, and I just, it kind of went in one ear and out the other. I didn't know what any of it meant, and then I started having to ask. And uh, asking questions, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that here in just a second. Uh, but all of that terminology, it is not, uh, it's not, uh, intrinsic for us. Uh, and if you can think way back to whenever you all started in the community, maybe you can remember not understanding what. Uh, now I, they have become natural for me, but just a few short months ago, I still would have to look up certain terms. Uh, my friend Lisa uh, began the uh, programming journey with me, and she went to a local Seattle code school open house, and she found another woman who was there alone and they were sitting together. Uh, she learned the woman was uh, actually uh, worked at a nail salon and had been helping the designer make their website and found out how much the designer made and was very curious about how the, the website was built and she's a very creative and artistic person and thought I could apply what I already know to this field and so she came to the open house and about halfway through the presentation which it is an open house aimed at both you know experienced programmers looking to enhance their skills and neophytes completely green newcomers she looks at my friend and says what does dev mean I thought we were here to learn about being programmers uh, she, she, the, the people, the educators, had been referring to uh, programmers as devs the entire time and, and already alienating a possible newcomer, a possible contributor through their terminology. And their purpose is to educate newcomers. Uh, it's just these little things that people are not thinking about that we're encountering. Uh, and then my main issue the first couple months was uh, understanding how to get code into production. So the whole idea when I started my first uh, freelance job, uh, going and having them install Bitnami and uh, all this random stuff, I had no idea what it did, I had no idea how it worked together. They had no interest in explaining it to me uh, unless I asked and then there was uh, the shortest definition possible, and so again, very lucky that I have other people that I can ask to explain it to me. Um, but this idea that we can somehow intuit how the technology works is false. We cannot, and, uh, and it, needs, it needs to be explained. Uh, and you know, hopefully one day, I am hoping, I, I learn well in a classroom setting, I am hoping to take a class, and I'm, I'm sure that I will find that a lot of this is explained in certain classes, but my journey is, uh, has been so kind of fragmented that uh, 
that I had to seek this knowledge for myself. And then this gift, just FYI, that's our middle daughter doing a back walkover. Uh, she's a competitive gymnast, and this was one of her goals from when she started gymnastics when she was six, and it took her two years of practice. Um, but you know, when she was six, she wanted to do it right away, didn't understand why she couldn't do it, and I think it's a good analogy to being a new programmer and just wanting to just be able to make the website. You know, I, I understand how HTML and CSS works. Why can't I just make it? Uh, all right. Oh, I forgot to tell you a story. So another terminology uh, example is uh, this one time where I fortunately did this on my own, not in person with somebody. I was supposed to uh, uh, install the repo, and I didn't know what repo was. And so I made a node, and I went and uh, uh, was explained it's the code repository. And so a little bit later, um, I went back to my computer, and I Googled code suppository and found, <laughs> found where John Ratcliffe inserts his code into the anus of the internet. Uh, immediately knew I was wrong. I was so, so thankful that I did that in the privacy of my own home on my computer. <laughs> Instead of saying to my boss, oh, I, I installed the suppository. <laughs> that would have been awesome. So, uh, you know, it's the little things. Uh, oh, here's my cat, cat gif. I'm not a cat gif person, I'm a dog person. That was our dog uh, on the first, uh, the first image. But there you go, Jaden just for you. And in return for that cat gif, Jaden is featured here in my um, downward spiral of assumption slide. Um, it's uh, that feeling of embarrassment and the fear of asking stupid questions. I think we all have that forever. Uh, and uh, But it becomes especially prominent when you are learning a new skill and surrounded by really smart, thoughtful people, uh, and so we feel very afraid <laughs> of asking stupid questions or just asking too many questions. Um, and that self-consciousness and embarrassment leads us to be less likely to ask all of our questions, and uh, we, therefore we are more likely to make mistakes. So, um, which leads, of course, to an increased likelihood of failure. And. <laughs> The, uh, back to that, uh, experienced developers, I have learned, are no less likely to uh, succumb to this downward spiral of assumptions than new programmers. Uh, again, when I started at my uh, freelance job, I went to a subcontracted company to help them install a dev environment, which I, I had no idea what that meant, and I learned, uh, and uh, showed up with the laptop I was using at that time, which was Bryce's um, Linux machine. It was running Ubuntu. And I got there, and the guy took a look at the machine and was like, mm, OK, that's not a PC. It's not, uh, or it's not running Windows, and it's not a Mac. Um, and I was like, well, have you done this before with Linux? Oh, yeah, 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 I've worked with Linux. I've been doing this 13 years. I can do it. He proceeded to spend the next five hours trying to figure out how to install things. And he kept asking me these questions. And so I was on my phone texting Bryce, asking him the questions. And I could sense his anxiety over my cell phone. Uh, uh, the questions were not clearly making sense, and um, but the guy just kept in, he was very nice, he was very friendly, he shared a lot of his experience with me, uh, and and he just kept plugging away, and I figured, okay, this is, this is programming, right? Trial and error, uh, and eventually after five hours, he had everything installed on Bryce's laptop. And uh, I went uh, to try to check my um, Gchat, uh, and Chrome kind of wasn't really working before I left. I was like, oh, that's a little weird. And he's like, oh, you should have your husband take a look at that. And I was like, OK. So I bring the laptop home, and immediately Bryce is like, give it to me. I want to see it. What happened? What, what, what is it? Uh, and that's when he saw this. That, that's the command that he used, which a apparently strikes fear in the heart of anybody who uses <laughs> Linux. Uh, and that was Bryce's reaction. Um, that his baby, uh, he had to wipe it, um, and 
So basically, for, I'm sure you all understand, but he basically like opened up all security on the laptop and made me the owner of anything so that uh, any changes could be made by any, uh, anything I was using on the computer. That's how I understand it. So uh, I, I, I told my brother, who is also a programmer, and uh, what happened, and he was like, oh my god, oh my, I'm so sorry. There's all this sympathy for poor Bryce. Um, and uh, that experience that day led me, uh, I mean, it was a learning, another learning experience for me that uh, we never lose that desire to appear in control and to appear as an expert, especially when our job is to be the expert and to help somebody new. But he really could have solved, uh, could have avoided the whole situation by uh, by simply saying, you know, I'm not really familiar with this, uh, and uh, maybe asking for some help. So I wrote uh, some tweets, which I'm working on a blog post. So this is my um, blog post. This is just an image of my tweets because I'm having issues with Twitter's archiving of the hashtag. But uh, I had a, a whole field day on Twitter about people not saying, I don't know. Uh, I started by saying, I don't know 101, a class for every adult ever. Uh, and instead of bullshitting your way through, try saying, I don't know, I don't understand, or please explain this to me. There's a few others, but my favorite one, and the point that I try to get across to anybody I talk to about um, who want to maybe try to enter this, again, it seems like a very exclusive world, uh, uh, is that do not self-deprecate when you are saying, I don't know, or asking questions. You are not dumb for not knowing. You are wise for knowing to ask. Uh, and I tell myself that every day because I still ask way too many questions, I, I think. So let me get this back up here. There's Brian and Soleil. I don't know. All right. So in addition to assumptions being made by others about our knowledge and experience, uh, new programmers are notoriously prone to um, exp uh, ex having too high expectations of themselves. Uh, we compare our work to others. Uh, Soleil talked about that yesterday. And uh, it constantly and chronically, uh, I find myself comparing my work to Bryce's. I mean, he's been doing this for like 13 years and has spent hours and hours and hours problem solving and, and uh, learning new things, yet I can't help but wonder when is my when is my sublime going to look like his? And I want I I, I want to go as fast as I possibly can, uh, and it's it's hard to to uh, kind of tame myself in that way. I've got to get through my notes. All right. Uh, we are also, uh, I, I think it's especially um, adults who have had success in other careers. Uh, it's difficult, as I said, to cope with the ever-changing world of software. Uh, for a little while, when um, Bryce had started a company, I worked at Starbucks for their excellent health care benefits. And uh, my Starbucks had a very busy drive through And so I had, you know, like 16 and 17 year olds teaching me how to make drinks. We call it barring in the drive through and it is extremely stressful. So be kind to your baristas, uh, especially in the drive through at Rush. Uh, but it's super stressful to do. It was way harder than I ever thought it could be. But they were very encouraging and assured me that after a lot of practice, in about three to six months, I would feel comfortable. And sure enough, it was, uh, I think it was about four or five months in, everything was coming naturally. The muscle memory had kicked in. I could remember all the modifiers. I could stagger the drinks as I made them. And I felt really good about what I was doing. And basically, that's it. That is the learning curve. Drink recipes change. You know, the beans change a little bit. But once you reach that point, that for until you are done making drinks at Starbucks, you are going to feel that comfort level with uh, the process. Uh, if somebody at Starbucks had told me that, OK, you're going to get comfortable, but then as soon as you feel comfortable, all the processes are going to change, uh, and you're going to think you know what you're doing, but then all of a sudden the steaming wand is not going to work, and you're going to have no idea why, and you're going to have to fix it right then uh, with everybody watching you and waiting. Uh, and this is going to continue until you're done working at Starbucks. I, I, I don't know, I might have quit. Uh, that is a little bit overwhelming, and, I, and that, that really feels kind of like what I'm having to accept as a, uh, as a new programmer. Uh, 
So what can you do? Uh, these are things that I think a lot of you are already doing. Maybe you can help encourage others to do it as well. First is offer to answer questions. Just because somebody looks like they know what they're doing does not mean that they don't have questions to ask. And one thing that I learned teaching childbirth classes is that awkward pauses are very useful. So asking somebody, hey, you know, do you have any questions for me about what you've learned in the past couple of days? and then standing there silently and waiting for them to process that. You don't have to fill that silence. The people need that silence to think about, oh my gosh, somebody's actually offering to answer my questions. Let me think about what those questions are. Share your stories. If you can remember stories from back when you were first learning or frustrations you encountered last week, that was one thing that uh, really got me through uh, and still does, is hearing um, somebody like Jen Fong Adwent, you know, the meat space uh, genius, uh, saying things, telling me about her frustrations and, oh, I tried this and it didn't work and so now I'm trying this and, and I'm not even sure if that's going to work but I'm going to try it anyway. Um, and just hearing her process makes my learning process feel totally normal and it gives me hope uh, as well. So please share those stories with newcomers that you meet. Uh, be careful when ridiculing popular resources. I know that W3 Schools is really easy to make fun of. Uh, and I get that, and we all, every, every industry needs to have the brunt of the joke, and uh, we need to vent, and that's awesome. But until you get to know the newcomer, you know, some, at the beginning, I could not remember, I could not absorb what Z index was. Every time I was like, wait, what is that again? I just don't, I couldn't remember. And it's the first Google result is Z index, uh, for Z index is W3 schools. It's a very simple explanation. Um, so, you know, if you make too much fun of that around new people, um, again, it just adds to those feelings of inadequacy and embarrassment that even the tools we're using to get better are being looked down upon by the people that we respect. So just, you know, be a little careful. Uh, model good behavior, that whole IDK 101 thing that I did. Let everybody see you asking questions and collaborating. And the open source community is really good about that. I mean, that's kind of what it's all about. Uh, but um, don't be afraid to let them see your weaknesses, the new people that you're uh, working with or that you meet. Uh, what else can you do? That, that, this last one is our oldest daughter. I asked her to say, you, 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 and then this is our youngest daughter. They all wanted to be included, so uh, so I've done my job. Uh, this is our youngest one, you, you, you. Um, reassure and encourage, but don't sugarcoat. We definitely need to know what we're getting ourselves into. We need to know the truth uh, so that we don't set our expectations too high. Uh, but um, continuing to reassure and encourage, which I've felt that so deeply here um, at this conference, uh, which leads me to my next one, uh, invite newcomers. I, I think there were student tickets available, right, for this, yes. Um, somehow uh, getting that out uh, at meetups, like local JavaScript meetups, so brand new people can come because finding the community for me is what really kept pulling me out of that downward spiral. Every time I felt myself being sucked in, it was my um, support system that pulled me back out. And uh, so coming to conferences like this, surrounded by people who are so willing to help uh, is, uh, is kind of critical. And this all led me to think about what, what can I do. And uh, in addition to talking to all of you about my experience, you know, I think I'm going to go out there and um, go to the next PTA meeting and talk. I know there are other moms out there uh, and, you know, more and more stay-at-home dads as well who are, uh, the, all their kids go to school and they have problem solving, critical thinking tools. They deal in very high stress situations. Uh, they work with people that they really don't like or get along with, but they have to work with because they're their kids, friends, parents, or the teachers. Uh, these are all skills that are um, necessary and missing from the tech community. Uh, they can learn to program. They can learn uh, the tech jargon. Uh, empathy and um, patience and critical thinking and problem solving, those are harder to teach. And I'm here to tell you that the stay-at-home moms of the world already have all those skills. And so it's just a matter of reaching out to them and welcoming them and, uh, and just kind of showing that. And so I, I think I'm going to do that some more. Uh, so thank you. That's, that's the end. Uh, Thank you.
Thank you.